land grabs, mass executions, cultural devastation, and all-out war. For centuries, Poland suffered bloodshed and destruction beneath the fists of Russia. And so, as the Russian bear unfurls its claws at Europe's borders once again, what can we learn from Poland to understand the brutal consequences of Russia's unchecked aggression? Or will we again ignore the warnings of history? Welcome to Living History. In order to understand Poland's relationship with Russia, we must travel back to the end of the 18th century, when the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was a vast and diverse state, encompassing territories that are now part of Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. Poland's once formidable military had been severely depleted by a series of conflicts and a brutal civil war and its geographical position at the heart of Europe left it vulnerable to what is now known as the Partitions. For more than two decades, the powerless King of Poland, Stanislaw August Poniatowski, helplessly watched as his country was annexed piece by piece. The first partition in 1772 saw Prussia, Austria and Russia begin expanding their own territories in order to reduce Poland's influence. With each subsequent partition, in 1793 and 1795, the Commonwealth's power and territory were further eroded until it no longer existed. These were significant territorial and strategic gains that allowed Russia to consolidate power in the region. The territories of Livonia and Belarus provided access to the Baltic Sea and strengthened its western borders. Through Belarus, Russia was able to secure and tighten its hold on Ukraine, a critical breadbasket for the Russian Empire, and consolidate its hold on the Commonwealth. Doesn't this tactic sound familiar to what we're seeing in Ukraine today? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? But back to Poland. A shattered Poland had lost its independence and suffered a significant decline in influence, and not for the last time. But despite Poland's inability to militarily withstand the partitions, their sovereign spirit could not be crushed. A revival was brewing. Throughout the 19th century, Polish nationalism remained a defiant force against Russian occupation and rule. They held fast to their history, culture, language and identity, and launched several uprisings in an unrelenting pursuit of freedom. The November Uprising of 1830-1831, led by General Józef Koplicki, posed a significant threat to Russian control of Poland and Lithuania, with an estimated 10,000 to 15,000 insurgents taking up arms. Then, in 1863, 30,000 insurgents once again rebelled in the January Uprising. Each time, though, Russia responded with increasingly brutal aggression to suppress the rebellion by any means necessary. Villages were demolished, crops burned, cultural and historical cities were destroyed, intellectual life and language was russified, and around 70,000 Poles were imprisoned or exiled to Siberia. Russia's land seizures and military assaults against Poland back then formed textbook strategies that are serving their purpose once again in Ukraine today. Russia has replicated the same brutal offensives with an onslaught of invasions in an attempt to, as they put it, demilitarize Ukraine and protect people who have been facing humiliation and genocide perpetrated by the Kiev regime. Now, if that isn't ironic, I don't know what is. But back to 1918, when Poland was finally able to regain its independence at the end of World War I with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. After 123 years of occupation, the rebirth of Poland was a momentous occasion and a testament to the resilience and determination of the Polish people. And they all lived happily ever after. For two years. In 1920 to 1921, conflict erupted between the newly established Second Polish Republic and Soviet Russia. The Red Army, deciding Poland hadn't been invaded for a while, marched back over in an attempt to spread communism westward, leading to a savage war. The conflict was fought primarily in the territories of modern-day Poland, Ukraine, Belarus and Lithuania. The Soviets were a few miles away from Warsaw when, exhausted from watching centuries of Poland's unequal footing and a lack of international support, the gods of justice intervened to restore balance. Well, 
Not quite. But in what came to be known as the Miracle on the Vistula, the Polish army managed to repel the Soviet advance, despite being heavily outnumbered and outgunned, pushing the Red Army to flee eastward for their lives. The daring battle was thought to be won thanks to divine intervention. Still, the war resulted in an estimated 70,000 to 80,000 Polish casualties and 120,000 to 160,000 Soviet casualties, both military and civilian. The conflict officially ended on March 18, 1921, with the signing of the Treaty of Riga and was the first time a European army had successfully defeated a Soviet invasion. Perhaps by now there should have been a manual titled When Russia Attacks on every military bookshelf. If there was, it would prove useful once again in the looming Second World War. As tensions rose in Europe in the 1930s, an unsurprised Poland found itself in a precarious position once again, sandwiched between Nazi Germany to the west and the Soviet Union to the east. Poland signed a mutual assistance pact with the United Kingdom and France in 1939, but was itself ill-prepared for another war. On September 1, 1939, Nazi Germany launched a massive invasion of Poland, using its superior military technology and tactics to quickly overrun the country. The Soviet Union, having secretly agreed to divide Poland with Nazi Germany, invaded from the east on September 17, 1939, and the country was quickly partitioned. Poland had counted on protective support from the pacts with Great Britain and France, but even in war, you can't trust anyone. In strong but ineffective disapproval, the Allies declared war against Germany in response, but military assistance was neglected. And so, a weary Poland took down its copy of When Russia Attacks and went again defending itself alone. The horrors of Poland during World War II are difficult to overstate. Russia's ferocious tactics were now reinforced by Nazi atrocities. Poles were subject to concentration camps and deportation. And in what is known as the Kachin Massacre, around 22,000 Polish military officers, prisoners and intelligentsia were executed. It is estimated that around 6 million Poles, including 3 million Jews, were killed during the war which amounted to around 20% of the country's population. Poland's bitter experience after World War II deepened the wounds of its people, who again endured a brutal regime of Russian control as a satellite state, with communism imposed and dissent crushed by the iron hand of the Soviet Union. In the 1980s, the Solidarity Movement emerged in Poland, led by Lech Wałęsa, which sought to end communist rule and bring democracy to Poland. Though initially suppressed, the movement gained momentum and eventually forced the Soviet government to negotiate. In 1989, free elections were finally held and the Solidarity Movement won a landslide victory, marking the end of communist rule in Poland and the beginning of a new era of democracy and freedom. For real this time. So far, at least. Despite historic disappointment, Poland has again strengthened its ties with the West after the fall of communism, joining NATO in 1999 and the European Union in 2004. And although Poland's calls to distrust Russia had been largely ignored in recent decades in favor of appeasement, Western nations are now again able to uncover the depths and extent of Russian capabilities and brutality. It is perhaps of little solace to the Poles, but despite the bitter struggles against Russia's historical injustices, Poland has gone from a country overlooked to a nation overobserved. And with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, this once victimized nation has emerged as a critical voice and one of the most geopolitically and geographically strategic countries in this war. It has been a vocal advocate for Europe and NATO to arm Ukraine, while also facilitating foreign aid through its airfields and transport networks. Poland fears that if Russia were to succeed in Ukraine, it would only be a matter of time before they are targeted once again. This time, though, surrounding nations are beginning to look in the mirror of Poland's history, hopefully before it repeats itself. 
With the acquisition of advanced weapons systems, a powerful military presence, and international allyship, Poland is sending a strong message to potential adversaries, Russian or otherwise. The unforgettable decades of suffering have served as assertive preparation, and Poland is now emerging as a major player in the region that can no longer be ignored. For more on Poland's rapid militarization, check out our other video linked here. For now, this is Living History, signing out.